The new Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2 is now here and it works with both iPhones and Android phones and it offers most of the features of the Apple Watch Series 5 for $100 less. But what are the differences between the two and which one should you go for? Hi guys, my name is Lily with Phone Arena and both these watches come in two sizes. You have a smaller 40mm version and a larger 44mm version. And the larger one on both is not gigantic, it's moderately large. The cheaper base models of both are made of aluminium and you also have more premium stainless steel versions. And then the Apple Watch also comes in even pricier titanium body. Or even a ceramic one if you're ready to spend more than a thousand dollars on a smartwatch. We have the aluminium models here and both retain their good looks even with a lot of use so no worries on that front. For navigation, the Galaxy Watch Active 2 no longer has the signature rotating bezel, so you navigate with taps, swipes and a new software trick called Touch Bezel, where you run your finger over the edge of the watch to simulate a physical rotating bezel. The Apple Watch on its part features the touch screen but also the digital crown for scrolling longer lists. For straps, you have a standard quick release system so it's extremely easy to change your strap to a different one. Well, the Apple Watch uses its own proprietary system with the pricey bands, but it's the advantage of being extremely easy to swap straps. You just push a button and slide the straps in and out. In terms of actual watch faces, both watches support always on display and then you have 15 preloaded watch faces on the Galaxy Watch and they will cover most of your needs plus you can customize them with a long press and out complications. The Apple Watch on the other hand, it is on the other hand actually, you know? <laughs> The Apple Watch, on the other hand, has even more first-party watch faces and it has the big advantage that it's so easy to switch between watch faces, you just swipe from the side for the next watch face. The watch faces are also a bit more refined. You can add up to 9 complications on the infograph face and you just don't have a face with so much information on the Galaxy Watch. Apple, however, still doesn't allow for third-party watch faces, while Samsung supports a lot of these and you can even create a watch face yourself via apps. Speaking of apps, this is an area where the Apple Watch has the advantage. You have a mini app store right on your watch, so you can even download apps without ever opening your phone. You can also install apps on the Galaxy and there are a few nice ones, but the choice and quality of apps overall is in favor of the Apple Watch. You can also control both watches with voice. You double press the home key on the Galaxy Watch to start Bixby and you long hold the digital crown on the Apple Watch to invoke Siri. To compare the two, we tried different commands, from a simple weather request that Bixby inexplicably failed to trivia questions, that Bixby cannot answer at all. Siri is clearly faster and more knowledgeable and actually useful. The one thing we found that Bixby was useful for is set reminders and alarms, but for all else it was not of much use. One smaller detail we noticed is that the Apple Watch gives a very nice and gentle tap on your wrist for notifications and when it needs to get your attention, while the vibration on the Galaxy Watch Active doesn't feel nowhere nearly as nice. So, what about the health and fitness tracking? Both watches have their own systems. The Apple Watch has the three rings that you aim to fill every day and the Galaxy Watch has something similar and both will tell you to get up and moving if you sit for too long. We found that automatic workout detection worked better on the Galaxy Watch. It takes around 10 minutes of the workout and it tracks a workout, while on the Apple Watch automatic workout detection doesn't really work that well and you need to manually start a workout every time. You also have automatic sleep tracking on the Galaxy Watch, a feature completely absent to the Series 5, while on the Galaxy you see a nice breakdown of your deep sleep times and overall quality of sleep. Next up, battery life. And the Galaxy is the winner here! It ends the typical day with around 50% on the battery meter and wearing it overnight drains just 5% battery while the Apple Watch would end the day with around 35% on the battery meter and it would drain a lot more if you wear it overnight. The result of this is that the Apple Watch Series 5 needs to be charged every night while the Galaxy Watch feels like a two-day watch. Finally, we should talk prices. The Galaxy Watch runs around $300. Well, the Apple Watch starts at $400 and can go all the way up to more than $1000 for the ceramic model. At the end of the day, we feel like the Apple Watch is still a more refined watch, it runs faster, its watch faces are better, you have more apps, and it ties nicely with the Apple ecosystem. But if you want a versatile watch that will work with both Android and iOS, that can actually last you for two days, and you can use for sleep tracking, the Galaxy Watch is a very good alternative. And this wraps up our comparison between two of the best smartwatches around. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to see more. My name is Lily, this is Phone Arena, and I will see you next time.